I'm Andrew Scott. Joining me this morning's ECR CEO, Andrew Haythorpe. Uh, Andrew, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? Yeah, very good, Andrew. You've been keen to put yeah. yourself in front of shareholders after your recent trip out to Victoria to meet Adam, meet the totally. team. What was your impression? How did the trip go? Uh, I thought my impressions, I was just so impressed um, with Adam and the entire team, uh, the drilling crew, all the support people, everything that they've put in place there in Victoria. Um, the local knowledge, of course, the geological knowledge is phenomenal. Um, Adam's commitment and passion for finding gold, um, you know, in every scientific method possible, uh, really, really impressive. So, you know, lots of small high-grade gold veins that have been already recognised based on the work that Adam's doing. And, of course, plenty more work to do moving forwards in terms of further recognition and definition. What's your impression of Bayliss and Creswick? Uh, what, what do you see as their potential? Well, look, I see the potential by their very nature. They are narrow veins, and we've seen that you know, clearly with our press releases and, and the work that's been done so far. And, you know, 20 to 50 centimetre wide veins is kind of quite common. High grades is also part of the territory there, of course. Um, Typically, structures that are two 500 metre long sort of structures um, and multiple structures. So, when we're talking Bayliston or Creswick, you're actually talking fields where there's just clusters and clusters of these veins and, and subsets, which you know, Adam's done a great job of getting on top of. Um, in particular, I think, which I hadn't appreciated prior to the visit though, is it's not exactly a new exploration technique, but I think the way Adam and the team have developed it is very exciting and very cost effective. Like it's a new cost effective and exciting methodology where they're actually looking for antimony as the primary lead marker for finding gold mineralization. Now, the brilliance with antimony and the sampling style that they've been testing and trialing just this year is indicating very high confidence with very good anomalies. And there is superb correlation between antimony and gold. But here's the punch. It's like three months of saved time and, and possibly hundreds of dollars of, of assay work. Um, and so what we've got is a real sort of shortcut opportunity to actually look not just where there's old workings and previous workings where gold's been found and all, you know the traditional sort of approach for the last 100 years of exploration, um, but what the team are onto, I think, is something very exciting where you can go off into a whole new area, um, no specifically defined workings. You can spend days and weeks, not months and years, define potentially antimony anomalies in the space of days, not weeks, months and years. And then those give you potential follow-up drill targets, which are virgin, you know, potentially sort of virgin undercover or semi-cover or, or previous un unrecognised. So... I think there's an urgency with this new technique to define things that might be even larger in structure, give us new opportunities for more significant substantive gold discoveries in terms of what we subsequently drill. And most of the ground has not been ever looked at in this manner. So that was one of the real highlights just for me is my first trip and like a, almost a, a first time observer um, so I'm very encouraging for Adam to see what we can do. And of course, unfortunately, you know, there's still COVID rattling through the system and just, just an email this morning with Adam and there's a couple of people who are just out due to contact for a week. So, you know, you've sort of still got these effects rippling through the system. And a lot of people keen to hear about the status of the, uh, the outstanding license at Creswick. My understanding that should be through in the coming months. Yeah, so again, Adam's not just on top of the geology and the management and, you know, a great team of people, including, you know, some great, um, some great drillers that Adam's working with very closely. Um, you know, he's also very much on top of the land, the complexities. And look, to be honest, the complexities of land ownership and control and access in Victoria, it always is, it always has been. It's, it's just the way it is. Um, Adam's doing a great job of managing that. Um, and that's something though that I'm very mindful, you know, so I'm looking at it also through the eyes of, let's say, what does this business look like over the next two to five years for shareholders? And there are limitations to what we can do to accelerate 
that process, you know, Adam really is doing a great job. There's not much more or better um, that can be done than what is being done. What's your understanding as far as outside interest uh, with ECR's Creswick licenses? For me, I was looking at two aspects. Firstly, what's the geology? What's the sort of likely budget moving forwards that Adam will need for Victoria? Um, of course, from my perspective is how do we fund that? Uh, possible JV, for sure. Uh, look, I'm always very open-minded and commercial. Um, if anyone makes a reasonable offer that makes sense, I think, for shareholders and stakeholders, then I think that's something that we should pursue. So JVs and, you know, those sort of opportunities moving forwards. Um, I do think we have some excess potential land there that we don't really need, uh, but we need to just sort of further investigate that and get valuations done. Uh, for those of you in the UK who may be familiar, Australia just had its first interest rate rise only a month or so ago um, in Australia. And for those of you who are familiar with property market, when you've got your first interest rate rise or perhaps many, many to come over the next two to three years, that doesn't really bode well for future property valuations. So I think as a board, we need to discuss that and, and be mindful of that for shareholders in terms of optimising the wealth of the whole company moving forwards, which is property, assets, and of course, gold. Um, so I think that's just one of the things that we're working through the review process as to what makes really good business sense for ECR mineral shareholders. I know as far as the, the Queensland tenements and the potential there, that's been a real eye opener for you. Uh, how would you like to see that develop? Oh, well, that was actually, Andrew, that was a phenomenal eye opener. Um, um, I hadn't really appreciated it until Adam actually pulled out some of the very old maps from the 1980s and 1990s, which is kind of the origin for his idea to pick up that ground. And when he showed me through it, the first thing is the sheer magnitude of scale. It's 900 square kilometres. I mean, it is vastly the largest property holding by orders of magnitude that the company has. Secondly, it's been recently granted, only recently granted. And thirdly, we own 100% of it. So we've got it clean and clear as a very low cost five-year opportunity to get out there and find something. Um, the fourth thing is the location, location, location. North Queensland is one of those overlooked locations in the Australian gold fields for probably 40 years now, I think, Andrew. Um, and when I say overlooked, we had the fabulous discoveries of Kidston, Mount Lation, Pajingo, Vera Nancy, Krakow, et cetera, et cetera. Go back 100 years ago, arguably the world's richest gold mine, Mount Morgan, was discovered, you know, in, behind Rockhampton in central Queensland over 100 years ago. So it is a, an area of fabulous geology. Okay, so what? Well, that's all wonderful, you know, history. Um, but the ground that... Adam's actually picked up for the company and replied and being granted, sits to an area almost the immediate uh, west of Townsville. So access, access is still a bit of a challenge, but it's really an hour and a half drive out of Townsville to Pentland and then you turn north. I mean, it's not horrendous if I can put it that way. And it's in, it is in the country of potential giants, you know, when I'm talking about geological multi-million ounce giants. Um, and the amazing thing is the previous work involved stream sediment sampling. So it's a very, very first stage of exploration work you do. In fact, I was doing that work myself as a geologist not long after I graduated from geology, not too far away from that area. Um, and the sort of anomalies that these guys turned up in that area were multiple occurrences of visible gold recorded in pan. Now, I know it's not easy to get out there in that country and just start panning for gold in a creek and then you find a little fleck of gold or two flecks of gold and two flecks of gold doesn't sound very exciting. But when it's in that kind of virgin country with those sort of deposits that have been discovered in far north Queensland historically, it has a whole new context. Now, despite all of that, the ground was dropped, I guess, after the 87 share market collapse and it's just sat there for 50 plus years in limbo. Now we own it. Um, and there's not just one or two gold flecks and one or two pan samples. There's multiple occurrences that have never been followed up. So again, um, I think from a, an exploration and a company opportunity, 
well, let's get out there as quick as we can, get as many boots on the ground as we can, chase up those um, stream sediment records, go further upstream, have a look around with boots on the ground, see what sort of interesting rocks are worth chipping and let's just see what we find geologically. And that's a good, that's a really good field season starting up now. They've just had an extended wet in May. It'll dry out soon. So the time's right really for July, August to get in there before Christmas and, and do some serious work. And that, that could all be really company. It, look, it's expiration, it's high risk, it's early days, um, but it could be company building stuff. Of course, ECR shareholders well aware we've got an existing, albeit modest, resource in the Philippines. Uh, where does that sit, do you reckon, within the portfolio? What's its future? Well, having, having had finally that wonderful week with um, Adam and the team in Victoria and, and sort of going through things, but also separately, um, we did initiate a review about not long after I joined the team with the Filipino geologist to, okay, well, let's review all the data, collect it all, let's see what's there. <clears throat> let's have a look at what you're thinking in terms of potential future drilling, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, Philippines does look really quite small and it certainly looks very small relative to what we're looking at in both Australia and Victoria, sorry, and in Queensland in particular. Um, so I would just say that we're it's in the review category at this stage and hopefully we'll have the report through in the next week or so from the Philippines. That'll give us the data and the insight that we, we need to then make a decision on the Philippines moving forwards. Um, and we'll just see what makes the most sense from an asset management point of view moving forwards, I think, on that asset. You, you alluded to it a bit earlier in terms of uh, prior to your appointment, the strategy uh, revolved around, say, property management, ownership of rigs, diversified projects. How will, yeah. how will things be different under your leadership? Well, look, I'm very much encouraged and I'm very much guided by people's input and I'm very much looking forward to getting up to London and meeting a lot more of the stakeholders because that's obviously on the, on the cards and it hasn't happened just yet. So with those conversations to come bearing in mind, I think the two real standout opportunities for the vision for us for a company moving forwards are twofold. One is you know, finding high grade gold veins that we can potentially mine economically and make money. So obviously the Victorian strategy fits quite nicely there at this stage. And then secondly, of course, is additionally, let's go and find the million ounce plus type deposits. Let's go and find something big. And then of course, that gives us something we can promote on a world scale. It gives us something that gives clear scale of value in terms of net present value and gives us all of that sort of potential upside. So I think they're the real two things. With regards to asset management, whether it's land ownership or drill rig management, or whatever ownership or et cetera, I think those things are simply the supportive businesses that we use to support the vision. But it's, you know, it's difficult to promote that we own one drill rig, two drill rigs or three drill rigs, therefore the share price should go up. I think it's a lot easier if we can find something that looks like another whatever analogy to Mount Kidston or Mount Laishan or Pajingo or whatever, and therefore the share price might go up. There's a, a much easier um, tangible uh, vision, I think, for the company, for us moving forwards. But that's just my first impressions, and I'd love to discuss with shareholders and see how they feel. Given your your impressive background, your, your track record, your previous businesses. What was the attraction you saw with an ECR, given it's a, a relatively junior uh, explorer? Well, uh, it's always great to be able to build from the bottom up, I think. And certainly when you see the opportunities as we currently have as a company in the existing portfolio, and then in addition to that, just, I guess, by virtue of, my experience and background, we do have new opportunities presented to us, you know, in different locations. And I'm talking mostly Australia, just because that's sort of a familiar patch, um, but also outside of Australia, which, you know, again, on a risk reward and the cost benefit, we'll have a look at. But I do have numerous uh, project opportunities come through and so do other friends and part of the network and so does ECR Minerals. So. I think with the skill set that we've got in the company and the management team that we've got, we've got one of the most wonderful teams with a great toolkit 
of assessment tools where we can really very quickly get to the heart of the matter and look at something in a meaningful way, not waste our time or money, but really get very quickly on top of it. And then from there, we can make a decision. Is this another opportunity for the company to grow? Is it something that we should pursue? Is it something that we should bring to shareholders to consider? And so we have multiple growth opportunities and there are a lot of gold projects coming out from the 1980s and the 1990s. They've been privately held for 50 years. The vendors have added another 50 years on their life and they're not doing anything with them at age 80. So there's still a lot of those sort of opportunities coming out, which I think ECR Minerals, we can really capitalise on the, the good ones as they come through.